Hi folks, my name is Jake. This is Bandit. Give me five, buddy. Give me five. Bandit, give me five. Okay, he's licking my hand. When he's on the floor, he gives me five like nobody's business. <laughs> Today, we're going to take a look at the most manly knife that I've ever reviewed. This is The Comrade by Manly. <laughs> manly Canada sent this to me to review at their own cost. Thank you very much, Manly Canada. And uh, we're going to take a good look at this knife. It comes in a wide variety. There you go, buddy. It comes in a wide variety of G10 options. You can get dual tone G10 like I have, or single G10, single tone, single color. And you can get it with three different blade types. Uh, I got the middle grade of the three that they have. You can also get it in D2, which costs less. Or you can get it in S90V, which costs more. Well, what's this one? This is CPM 154. So it's that particle steel, really fine grain steel, very durable, and yet it sharpens actually a little more easily than 440C. So how does that work? <laughs> I'm not a metallurgist. I don't know. That's just what the specs say. And uh, cutting tests that people have done bear that out. I've had very, I've had two knives with CPM 154, uh, and I've had 154 CM, which is a very similar steel. Well, it's the same chemical property, but the steel's prepared differently. CPM is the particle steel, which means the grain's really, really fine. And the CM 154, the 154 CM is the same steel, but the grain's a little coarser, and so the durability is not quite as good. That's how Crucible explained it. Uh, this knife is a full-size slip joint. Now, don't run away. Slip joints, are they safe? Sure they are. They're the safest knife out there. How, do, how can I say that? The safeness of a knife has almost nothing to do with the knife. It has everything to do with the user. If you use a knife the way it's designed to be used, you know, they're safe. I have never, ever even nicked a finger at all opening or closing one of these knives. I grew up in the 60s. Well, I was born in the 60s. I grew up in the 60s and 70s. And my first knife, my second knife, my third knife, you see where I'm going here, were all slip joints. And so I learned how to use a slip joint very well. They're a very safe knife. As long as you don't start using the tip to slam into things <laughs> or pry with because that's not what tips of blades are designed for anyways. If you use the knife to cut with, or even do pull cuts with, perfectly safe. And that's enough of an introduction, isn't it? <laughs> if you're interested at all in a really cool slip joint knife, stick around, the full review's coming at you right now. Slip joint knives, like I said in the introduction, I think they're totally safe. This one comes with extra safety features. If you don't remember to keep your hands out of the way, it has what we call half stops, except for this one's got three of them. It's got one right there, and that's where the knife wants to stay. You have to push or pull to get it to get out of that spot. There's another one at pretty close to the halfway mark, and there's another one right there, and then it closes. It doesn't have a hard spring pulling it closed. It's a very safe knife. You know, wherever I stop, that's where it stops. You know, until the very end, that last little bit, it pulls, and not much. Very, very safe design. I'm using an auto focus feature this time, and that's what I'm hoping. It's not gonna bounce back and forth with the focus. You know, sometimes it does this kind of thing with the focus, and that's really disconcerting. So hopefully this will work well. We've got a full flat grind, drop point blade, bit of a belly here, long straight section, a unique sharpness choil. Almost a guard. There's a little bit of the steel, how it gets deeper than the handle is. And so when your index finger is on there, it knows to stop right there. You go any further, you know, you can feel it that you're going to be going over an edge. The handle is very much the same depth all the way along. A little bit of a curve here at the back. 
fits quite well in the hand. Driver bits that you're going to use to take this apart. The screws are hex or Allen. Uh, these are number two, two millimeters. And before we go any further, I'll show you a picture of it with the uh, handle scale taken off. So you can see they've skeletonized it, had it lose weight. I do not. Since there is a spring in there, it can be tricky to put it back together because it's under spring tension and you're trying to put in screws at the same time. And what I would do, and what I did do, is I take a small C-clamp and I you know, put the C-clamp on it to hold it together. You can also use those steel paper clips, but you put those big springy clip things on there and that will help keep it together because the handle scales can, or the liners, can sort of come off when you've got the handle scale screws off. And then you're gonna have that challenge of putting it back together. Uh, you could oil it a little bit better if you take this one handle scale off, but I do not recommend taking the whole thing apart, even though you can. Uh, if you're very good at that, uh, you know, and you can work with the tensions of the spring and stuff, you know, go ahead, it's your knife, do what you want with it. So there's that. Now, uh, since we've got on the subject of taking it apart and things, you notice the skeletonizing, that helps with the weight a little bit, so let's go over all of the dimensions. Mine has the, uh, like I said, CPM 154 steel in it. You can get it with D2 or S90V, and it's going to weigh the same 114 grams, 4 ounces. So a 4 ounce full-size knife, not bad at all. I like it. It feels good in the hand in terms of its weight and it's compact. The um, cutting edge from the factory, I was a little disappointed. 205. I was hoping for a little bit sharper because when I felt the cutting edge, it's nice and thin behind the grind. The length of the cutting edge is 8.5 centimeters, 3.35 inches, the length of the blade, so tip to the closest spot on the G10, 9 centimeters, 3.54 inches, so three and a half inch blade here. The blade thickness, and I measured it at the spine right here before it started thinning, and it's got a long distal taper. taper. It starts thinning very early on there and slowly thins down. 2.9 millimeters, 0.114 inches. The blade depth, and that's this measurement. I usually measure it about an inch up from the sharpness choil, because that's where we cut the most right about there. That is 2.3 centimeters, 0.91 of an inch. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, I measured 0.35 millimeters. That's 0 0.014, and that's a very good thinness. And I knew it was thin, and that's why I thought it would be sharper. Uh, the reason it's not sharper, let me show you an image of the factory edge. So the edge there that's dark, right at the cutting edge here, that should be, on most knives, just a single grind. But what happened on this one, somehow they got a, what we call a micro bevel along most of it. It's an extra little grind right at the edge. And that micro bevel was at a fairly steep angle, which made the edge a little more blunt. So. I think that uh, somebody at the factory had a slight little error when they made this knife. Not a big deal at all. It's easy to sharpen that out. And once I've sharpened this myself, and I did sharpen it, uh, now the cutting at the tester is no longer 205. It cuts at about 65. So it just slices through very, very easily. If you're not familiar with that, I've got a spreadsheet where I measure the how hard it is to cut through a monofilament fiber uh, with a knife. It's a, it's a mechanism that's designed to measure how much force it takes to cut through, and it's a very standardized measurement. 200 is considered sharp. Anything lower than 200 is considered very sharp. The handle now, the handle length is 11.48 centimeters, 4.52 inches, and that's also the grip length because you know, you've got a little bit extra grip here, so I'm just calling that the same. The handle thickness is 1.42 centimeters, that's 0.56 of an inch, very good. The handle depth, 
2.06 centimeters, that's 0.811. When it's closed, the handle depth here is 2.97, which equals 1.71 inches. So quite small this way, fits in your pocket very well. The total length of this knife when the blade is deployed is 20.5 centimeters, and that's just over eight inches. So with a knife that's just over eight inches and a blade that's three and a half, you'll get a balance point. Where's the balance point? Right back here. It's very handle heavy, which means it's very, very um, light in the blade. But being a total of four ounces, it really doesn't matter that the balance point is back a little bit. It's a very comfortable knife in hand, except for my first con that I and that's that the G10 has almost 90 degree angles on it. It's very got very, very slight chamfering on it. That's easy, easy to fix. For people that don't like that, you just take a little sandpaper and you just, you know, sand that corner a slightly rounded. How much does this knife cost? I'll have links for the Manly Canada site. I'll have links for Manly USA. Even if they don't have this knife, I'll have links to Manly USA because they've got a number of other models that you might be interested in. Fixed blades, not just slip joints. They got other knives. They got, you know, they got a variety of knives. And their head office is in Bulgaria. This knife is actually made in Bulgaria, the Comrade. Uh, I think most all other knives are made in Bulgaria. I'm not totally sure. And uh, they've got this as well. And uh, they've got like 21 different combinations on their Bulgarian site. So between their color combinations and their steel combinations, they've got 21 different options that you can buy from them. So you can buy it from their website in Bulgaria if you're in Europe. Um, I'm not sure if they ship to North America or not. There's another website that ships to North America, and that's Lamnia. And Lamnia is in the United Kingdom. Their, their prices are okay, but they're not super great. I like that there are a load of options with this knife. Three different steel options and a wide variety of G10 options. Uh, two two tone options, or you can get this, you know, very bright, what's they call it, toxic green if you want, and orange, and just a wide variety of options. Uh, two different tones of gray and black, uh, all kinds of ways of getting this. So I like that they've got options. I like that it's got a pocket clip. Most slip joint knives do not have pocket clips, and this pocket clip works very well, and it looks quite good. Let me show it in a pocket. So the knife, the pocket clip just jumps right over that, slides right down. You've got a little bit sticking out of your pocket, not much at all, and it's because the edge is folded over just a little bit right there that it just you know, it's like it grabs onto your pocket and just wants to be there. Very, very good. They have a little milled out section in here that the pocket clip sits in. That's why one screw is totally adequate to hold it in place. And, uh, you know, it just is a very good knife to carry, especially in Canada. This is a very good choice. Uh, because it's a slip joint, it doesn't look at all like it's a weapon or dangerous. Um, and, you know, it's just a very good choice to have. The ability to take this G10 off to do a little bit of cleaning, that's good. Although, as I suggested, don't take this side off unless you're ready for a little bit of work putting it back together. Another big pro is that it's got those half stops and that it's got three of them. And it just doesn't take a lot of spring pulling it closed. It doesn't have a lot of spring pulling it closed, I should say. That's a really good thing. Most slip joints, you know, you get a little bit past and they'll just, and they'll just suck it right in. And uh, so this is a very safe slip joint. Um, I like this a little bit of, you know, not quite a finger guard, but it's a little bit of a spot that you have your hand on it and you know that your finger is at the end of the blade always. You don't have to look at it, you just know. There's no jimping on here. It doesn't really need it. There's a little bit of a thumb riser and it, you know, it just feels really good in hand. Full flat grind, very thin at behind the grind. It makes this a great slicing knife. The CPM 154 is a mid-grade steel in my opinion. It's bumping up onto a premium grade steel, but if you want that, the S90V is a really good choice. Um, and the con here, well, the only con is that this well, the, the two cons are, as I mentioned, the chamfering that's needed on here. 
super, super minor. The other one is I found that this screw backed out. I opened and closed this thing probably uh, 50 times because that's one of the tests that I do on all knives. And I just opened and closed it a load of times and the screw backed out a little bit and then it became a little bit loose, uh, you know, side to side play. There was no play otherwise. And to fix that, I suggest you get this product. By um, ND Industries, they make this VC3 Threadmate uh, material. It's called a thread locker, but really, you know, it's adjustable, removable, reusable. And that's because it doesn't dry hard. It always stays sort of soft and I don't want to use the word rubbery, but it stays sort of soft so that it keeps holding and the vibration of opening and closing a knife, even a, you know, a flipping knife where it just goes thwack, thwack, thwack when you open it, that kind of vib vibration stops the screw from backing out. It's really good for folding knives and I mentioned it many, many times. And uh, ND Industries sent me VC3 and Drive Grip. I've got a lot of these to give away. And since this stuff costs a lot of money outside of the United States, I'm giving away some packs of this, you know, a Drive Grip. It's an anti cam out fluid. So you put that on your screwdriver tip or into your screw hole, the, the head of your screw, I should say, and it causes it to grip really tight and not slip. And so it's a really good material for that. You got to shake up both of these materials. This one within the tube, it's a little hard to shake up and it stays good, but you got to shake it up and then put a little bit in there and that saves you from, you know, having it slip out and strip screw heads. The reason I'm giving it away to everybody except for Americans, the shipping that it would cost me to send this to you is about the same as what it would cost for you to buy it on Amazon. What I'm doing is, I'm not doing giveaways for this, I'm selling it. For one cent Canadian, you can get this VC3 and the drive cam, plus $9.99 Canadian for shipping. And so I will mail this to you for a total of $10 Canadian anywhere in the world, and you can have this uh, to, to try out. So it's only the first um, eight, or so people because I've got a couple of people that I've already given some of these to. So the first eight people that email me at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com that are not with addresses in the United States, I'm very willing to send these to you. If you want to save even more money, ask about one of the knives that you saw last month, not during May, but that you saw during uh, April, you know, January, February, March, April. I might still have that knife and you can buy it from me or other knives that are even older than that, that I reviewed even a long time before that. And maybe I'll sell it to you. I sell all my knives at 85% of retail. So if it's $100, I'll sell it to you for $85 and it will have my mirror edge on it. And thanks to my Patreon supporters, you guys are awesome. The giveaway for May will be coming up in just a few days. If you want to become a Patreon supporter and have a chance to win a free knife at the end of the month, sign up at patreon.com slash CCE before the end of May and you'll be in the draw that happens in the first week of June for one of the products that I reviewed in May. Uh, Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.